Ken from CleverSurvivalist.com and I'm here to show you how I built an A-frame level used to survey. Uh, it's really windy out here uh, because there's a storm about to blow in. Um, so if you haven't, go ahead and check my post about uh, storm survival if you're not watching this video too late. Uh, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear me. This is my first time using this camera. so. I don't know what the picture is going to be like, and I don't know what the sound is going to be like. Uh, every other video that I've done has been with my cell phone. Alright, so uh, let me show you real quick exactly what I did. These legs are both 4 foot in length. I bought 1 inch by 8 foot uh, pieces of timber, and I just cut it in half, and you can easily reach it from the standing position uh, and then I made the A all right and there's there is two screws holding everything together even though you can probably only see one on the front all right so and then what I did is I made sure that as I built this I built it on a level ground I built it as level as it could be uh, and then I zip tied a level to it um, so let me go ahead and show you guys how how to use this and I've got some flags that I got from uh, Lowe's and you can use these to mark uh, mark the contour if you guys remember I did a post on contour uh, and this is me mapping out the contour of the property I'm getting a really late start because, uh, well, I've been working 60 to 72 hour weeks every single week for probably the last two months. So uh, I'm just now finally getting out and, and able to do all the, the gardening and yard work and stuff that I need to be doing. So let me show you guys how to use this. All right, so I have my level here. Um, and in order for you guys to see the level, I had to, to lower the camera down so you're probably not gonna be able to see me, which let's be honest, who wants to see me anyways? Um, I'm going to show you uh, how to map out a contour now using the A-frame level and these uh, flags for markers. Alright, so what I'm doing right now, I am mapping out from one spot to the other. I am moving my leg on one corner until I can see the bubble in this middle right in the center all right so right about there all right, I know you guys probably can't see the other leg but I'm gonna mark that leg over here and then I'm gonna Mark this leg over here. And then I'm just gonna rotate it around. I'll start about 180 degrees out from where I was. Uh, you guys aren't gonna be able to see this, so let me go ahead and reposition this camera real quick, all right? Sorry, I had to reposition the camera. Um, I wanted to make sure you guys could see because it looks like the contour is going to follow a different line than what I thought. And that's the reason why you do this with a level instead of trying to eyeball everything. So, once again, it's the middle bubble on the level. And all the level, the level is just zip tied. Uh, it's just zip tied to the, to the A-frame. So. So there's my next one. See, it's going exactly the way I thought it would go. Alright. And now I rotate it around again. 180 degrees, about that. Because I have a feeling I know which way the contour is going. So, at this point I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to do a full contour. Uh, I'm going to do a full contour line uh, of this property. Um, just so that you can see one of the contours and then I'll bring the video back on so that you can see what I plotted out real quick. All right, I'll see you guys here in a little bit. 
Okay, so I got my contour line here. All right, you can see some uh, that white flag there, right, right there in the center. All right, and as I move, you can see it wraps around this tree. Let me step back a minute, just so that you can kind of see it. You see how it wraps around that tree. All right, and I went ahead and made another contour line. All right, over here, out of pink. I don't know if you can see it because I can't see it, but uh, it's right through here. There's some pink ones. Uh, looks like the camera might be colorblind, or at least I am through the camera. So, uh, nothing was completely straight. See, there's the pink one, and I did that contour line there. There we go, we can see it better now. All right, so as you can see, I've got one contour line that just kind of sweeps across, and then the other contour line right below it sweeps across that way and then comes up that way a little bit. All right, now these right here are contoured lines. Well, you know what? Let me reposition the camera. Um, show you this A-frame ladder, this A-frame level real quick. All right, so as you can see, I've already shown you the level. All right, and it's just zip tied to it. All right, it's zip tied real tight, and it works really well. All right. So, uh, I'm going to reposition this camera and I'll talk to you a little bit more. So, as you can see, uh, as I've already showed you, I have a contour that sweeps across here, goes to the other side, and the pink contour sweeps over here, kind of kind of veers off a little bit over here to the left, and then comes back towards the right a little bit. Now, the reason why I got this contour is because uh, these are the lines that I will follow whenever I dig my swales. Um, obviously, this is kind of a, uh, you know, this is a suburban lot, so I'm not gonna be digging large, um, you know, large commercial grade swales or anything like that. It's gonna be miniature swales for these, uh, for these hybrid hugelbell beds that I've already told you guys about. All right, so um, the, the plan is, is right along right along this, uh, this uh, contour here is I will dig one ditch on one side, one just on the other side, alright, and the one that is over here on the higher elevation side of the contour will just be a hollow ditch and I will heavily mulch it almost to the top. All the excess dirt is going to be brought over here. This one will have to actually be dug first. This will be the bed. Um, right here, I can fill it in with uh, wood. Uh, you know, I've already told you guys about the Hoover culture beds. Uh, you can fill it with wood, and then you can put the dirt back on top, and a lot of green material, which I've got a ton of green material from all the all the grass and weeds that have been growing up. Um, but all the dirt that was part of the ditch is now going to be on top of the bed, so it's going to be a nice raised bed. Alright, so um, hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. And I don't know if, if you can really tell, but uh, the slope is actually angled down like that. So the ditch is going to be on the upper side, and the, uh, or the swale. And then the miniature hookah culture bed is going to be on the lower side. Um, the swell will collect all the water. It will push the water up, or it will it will sink into the ground. And then the hookah culture bed will actually bring the water back up into it into its fungal layer, and uh, that's gonna that's gonna give us a real good uh, real good uh, reservoir of water for. Uh, Anytime that there's a hot, dry sun and there's a drought or anything like that. So, uh, hopefully, um, I'll be able to do another video pretty soon where I'm digging the, uh, the swell and beds and stuff like that because I don't really have a lot of time right now. Uh, it kind of sucks uh, getting a late start, but uh, I guess I'll just have to take advantage of, um, of some quick hoop. Um, quick hoop 
greenhouse uh, things that I have plans on you. Alright, I'll see you guys later.